live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2019. Brought to you by Informatica. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier. We're joined by Sally Jenkins. She is the Executive Vice President and CMO here at Informatica. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, Sally. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. It's nice to see you all again. So congrats on a great show, and we're going to get to the stats of the show, but the framework of Informatica World is built around these four customer journeys. Next-gen analytics, cloud hybrid, 360 engagement, data governance and privacy. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about how this framework reflects what you're hearing from customers and their priorities? Yes, absolutely, Rebecca. And, and yes, you got them right in the right order. Thank you. So look, we started this journey with our customers and trying to understand how do they want to be spoken to? What business problems are they solving? And how do they um, categorize them, if you will? And so we've been validating that these are the right journeys with our customers over the past few years. So everything that you see here at Informatica World is centered around those journeys. The breakouts, our keynotes, all the signage here in our solutions expo. So, and it's all in validation of how our customers think and those business problems they're solving. So the show, uh, 2,600 2, attendees from 44 countries, 1,200 sessions. Um, what's new? What, what's, what's new and exciting? Oh gosh, there's so many things that are new this year. And, and one other stat you forgot, 92 customers presenting in our Whoa. breakouts. So our customers love to hear from other customers as to what journeys they're on, what problems they're solving. So yeah, so those record numbers for us, record number of, record number of partners sponsoring. Um, we've got AWS, we've got Google, we've got Microsoft, we've got the up and comers that, we've, that we're calling in the cloud and AI innovation zone. Um, so people like Databricks and Snowflake. So we wanted to highlight those up and comer partners, what we call our ecosystem partners, along with the big guys. Cause you know, we're the Switzerland of data. We play with everybody. We play nicely with everybody. So a lot of new things there. Other, a, f a few other things that are new, direct feedback from our customers last year. They said, we want you to tell us which breakouts we should go to or what um, workshops should we attend. And so we rolled out two things this year. One, one's called the, the Intelligent uh, Scheduler. And that's where we ask customers, what journey are they on? What do they want to learn about? And then we make a smart recommendation to them about what their um, agenda should look like while they're here. You're using the data. Yes, <laughs> AI, right? We're, in, we're involving AI and making the recommendations out to our customers. In addition, our customers said, hey, we want to connect with other customers that are like us on their journey Journeys so we can learn from them. So we launched what we call the Intelligent Connect. And again, this is part of our app, which our app's not new, but what we've done with our app this year is new. We've added gamification. In fact, as part of the AI and cloud innovation zone, we are asking our customers and all of our attendees to vote on th who they think is the, the, the one with the best innovation. And so they're using our app to use voting. Um, we've, they can win things, so there's lots of gaming. There's social um, that's involved in that, so the app's new. Um, we're taking advantage of day four. We usually end around lunchtime on day four this year. We're going all in, all day workshops so that our practitioners can actually roll up their sleeves and get started working with our software and our ecosystem partners are also leading a lot of those workshops. So a lot that's new this year. And as I mentioned, the um, Cloud and AI Innovation Zone, that's new, it's, it's like a booth within a booth here on the Solutions Expo floor. So it's, this is the year of new, for sure. You know, one of the things that's been impressive, I was talking to Anil and also Bruce Chisholm was on, board member. The bets you guys have made have been, is impressive. You look back and we, this is our 10th year in theCUBE, so we go to a lot of events, hundreds of events a year, over 100 events, over 10 years. We've seen the story with you guys. This is now our fourth year mm -hmm. doing the cube here. Mm -hmm. And the story has not changed. It's been early moves, big bets, cloud, early, going private to see this next big wave, uh, AI early mm -hmm. before everyone else. So this has really kind of shown, and I think the ecosystem part is on stage with Databricks, Snowflake, really kind of point to a new cast of characters in the ecosystem. That's right. You're seeing a, not just the classic enterprise, because you guys have great big large enterprises that you do business with who want to be SaaS-like, they want the agility, they want all those great things, but now you have cloud. The go to market seems to have changed. This is an ecosystem opportunity. That's Can right. you share what's new? Because you see Amazon, Google, mm -hmm. and, and Azure. You got the cloud, you got on-premise, you got now Edge and right. IoT. Everything's right. happening with data. 
hard, it's complex. What's new, what's the ecosystem benefit? Can you just share some color commentary around how you guys view that? as a company. Yeah, and thanks John, and that's a good question. I'm, I'm glad you're pointing out that our whole go-to-market motion is evolving. It's not changing, it's evolving, because we want to work with our customers in whatever environment they want to work in. So if they're a cloud, uh, working in a cloud environment, we want to make sure we're there with our cloud ecosystem partners, and it, it doesn't matter who, because like I said, we work with everybody. We work nicely with everybody. So we are tying in our cloud ecosystem partners as it makes sense, based on what our customer needs are, as well as our GSM partners. So we've got Accenture's here, they brought 35 people to Informatica World this year. So we play nicely with Accenture, Deloitte, Cognizant, Capgemini. So we really are wanting to make sure that we're doing what makes sense with our customer and working with those partners that our customers want to work with. Well I think one of the observations we've made on theCUBE and we said in our opening um, editorial segment this morning and we're asking the question about the skill gaps which we'll get in with you in a second, but these big partners from the global system integrators to even indirect channel partners, whether they're software developers and or channel partners, they all are now enabled and are mandated to create value. Yes, that's and right. And if they can't get to the value, those projects aren't going to get funded and they're not going to get renewed. And so we've seen with the Hadoop cycle of uh, just standing up right. infrastructure for infrastructure's sake isn't going to fly. Right. You've got to get to the value. And data, the business that you're in, is the heart of it. Yeah, well data's at the heart of it. That's why we're sitting in a really nice sweet spot because data will always be relevant. And as you, the theme of the conference here is data needs AI and AI needs data. So we're, we're always going to be around, but like I said, I feel like we're sitting right in the middle of it and we're helping our customers solve really complex problems. And again, like I said, if we need to pull in a GSI partner for implementation, we'll do that. We've got close to 400,000 people around the world trained on how to use Informatica solutions. So we're poised and we are ready to go. You know, we were talking before we came on camera, we were sitting there catching up, uh, Sally, and you know, I made a, um, I always make these weird metaphors and references, but I think you guys are in, a, in a, an enabling position. It reminds me of VMware when virtualization came in, because what that did was it changed the game on what servers were from a physical footprint, mm -hmm. but also changed the economics and changed the development landscape. This seems to be the same kind of pattern we're seeing in data, mm -hmm. where you guys are providing an operational model with technical capabilities, ecosystem lift, mm -hmm different economics, right, right. so kind of similar, and that was a good, I mean, VMware had a good run now, obviously part of Dell. I'll take that Didn't, analogy, John, <laughs> thank you. I mean, what's your reaction, do you, do you see it that way, or I mean? Yeah, no I do, and again, it all comes back to the journeys that we talk about, right, because our customers, they're never on just one journey, most of them are on multiple journeys that they're deploying at the same time, and so as they uncover insights around one journey, it could lead them to the next, so it really comes back to that, and data's at the center of all that. I want to ask about the skills gap, and this yes. is a problem that is, is, is the technology industry is facing on a lot of different levels. Mm -hmm. I want to hear about Informatica's thoughts on this and what you're doing to tackle this problem, and, and, and also what kinds of initiatives you're starting around this. Well, I'm glad you asked, because it's actually top of mind for us. So um, Informatica is taking a stance in managing the future so that we can get rid of the skills gap in the future. And last year we launched a program that we call the Next 25, and that's where we're investing in middle school age students for the next seven years. It starts in sixth grade, it takes them all the way through high school, where we're, they're part of a STEM program. In fact, we partnered with the Cash Middle School here in Las Vegas, because we wanted to give back to the local community since we spend so much time here. And so these kids that are part of the STEM program take part in what we call the next 25, where we help them understand beyond uh, academics what they need to learn about in order to be ready for college, whether that's social skills, um, or teamwork, or just how do we help them build the self-confidence. So it, be, it goes beyond the academics, but one of the things that we're talking about tomorrow is what's next as part of STEM, because we all know that they're very good at STEM. And so we've engaged with one of the professors at UNLV to talk about what does she see as a gap as she sees Middle, age, um, um, middle school students and high school students coming to college. And so that's where she recognizes that coding is so important. So we've got a big announcement that we're making tomorrow for the next 25 kids around coding. You know, it's interesting, you know, um, we've been talking about this all day because my daughter just graduated from Cal, so it's fresh in my mind, but I was pointed out at the graduation ceremony on Saturday that the first ever class at Cal U University of California, Berkeley, graduated for, at data science. They graduated mm -hmm. their inaugural class. 
that goes to show you how early it is. Yes. The other thing we're also hearing on this interview, is, in these interviews as well as others, is that the aperture for, or the surface area for opportunities is, isn't just technical. Right. There's, you could be pre-med and study machine learning and computer science. There's so much more to it. Right. What do you see just anecdotally or just from a personal standpoint and professional key skills that you think uh, people should hone in on? What dials should they turn? More math, more coding, more cognitive, more social, emotional. Right. What do you see as, as uh, skills that they can tailor up for their... Well, like so just let's just start with the data scientists, right? So we know LinkedIn has identified that there are 150,000 job openings just for data scientists in the U.S. alone. Okay, so what's more interesting than that is four times that are available for data engineers. And for the first time ever, data, engineer, data engineers starting salaries are paying more than starting salaries on Wall Street. So there's a huge opportunity just in the data engineering area and the data scientist area. Now you can take that any which way you want. I mean, I'm in marketing and we use data all day long to make decisions. So you don't have to be, in, you don't have to go down the engineering path, but you definitely have to have a good understanding of data and how data drives your next decisions, no matter what field you're in. And it's also the other skills that you were talking about, particularly with those middle school kids. It is the, the collaboration and the right. teamwork and all of those too. Yeah, so it, it does, again, it goes beyond academics. I mean, these kids are brilliant. I mean, most of them are seventh or eighth grade, but they are just, nothing holds them back. And that's exactly what we're trying to inspire within. So there, we're, we have them solving big global problems. And you'll hear as they talk about how they're approaching this, they work in teams of five, and they realize to solve huge problems, they need to start small and local. So some of these big global problems that are working on like eradicating poverty, they're starting at the local shelters here in Las Vegas to see how they can start small and make a difference. And this is all on their own. I mean, we, we have, I have folks on my team who are junior genius counselors with them, but that is really to foster some of the conversations. All the new ideas are coming directly from the kids. My final question is obviously, uh, for the folks who couldn't make it here watching, know you guys, what's the theme of the show? Because the news right out of the gate is obviously the big cloud players that's key, and right. then kind of the new breed of partners, Snowflake, uh, Databricks is an example. Um, hallway conversations that I'm hearing, you know, can be kind of geeky and customer focused around like, where do I store my data? So you're seeing a range of conversations. Right. What is the theme this year? What's, the, what's, what's different this year, or what's more the same? Where are you doubling right. down? What's going on here for the show? What's the main content? Well, so this is our 20th Informatica World, if you can believe that. We've been around for 26 years, but this is our 20th Informatica World, and several years ago we started with the disruptive power of data. And then last year we talked about how we help our customers disrupt intelligently. And this year the theme is around clarity unleashed. And you can tell that the theme that has been, that we've been you know, talking about for the past three years is all underpinned with AI. So it is all about how AI needs data and data needs AI and how we help bring clarity um, to our customers' problems through data. And pun on, and, the, and the play on words, Claire. Exactly. Your AI to clarity. <laughs> so Claire's at the center of uh, you know, our intelligent data platform, so it is a play on AI, right? But that is where Clarity Unleashed comes from. Terrific, well thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, Sally. It's great, thanks Rebecca. Great having you. Thanks John, thank nice you. to see you all. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. We will have more from Informatica World. Stay tuned.